come back to the storytelling part of uh, the children themselves, you know, I think uh, since we have done for so many years, did, did you ever happen to see some ch real perceptible change in some of these children who have gone through these workshops and therefore they become more receptive and they're more accommodative and they're able to express uh, themselves and the more important thing is like you rightly said, you know, they're able to enjoy the classes, they're able to see the classes you know, in a totally different way than any other uh, ch children who are just going over, just going to the classrooms for the sake of, I mean, somebody's forcing them kind of thing. Mm. So did you come across any such changes that, you know, that made you happy and that gave you the conviction uh, to yourself saying that, yeah, I think it really works? Right, right. So um, I had one opportunity and I really cherish that because that was the only time where I could work with one school over eight months oh, yeah, yeah which is which is the kind of work I want to do ideally Wait, not it? just a flash in the pan this was in Vishakhapatnam okay. mm -hmm. yeah so I worked with the children with the teachers uh, with the management yes Very simultaneously good. so the idea was that over a period of time um, I should not be required and the teacher must be able to take forward whatever right. I have begun to attempt mm -hmm. and also not just share stories and leave it what can you do with the stories? Right. So there was a lot of structured post storytelling activities. So we'd stay with one story for one month. So oh. initially teachers would say, no ma'am, <laughs> the children are going to get bored, same story and I would reassure them, just trust me, mm -hmm. the children will not get bored. So we would revisit the story in so many different ways. We would do a puppet show of the story, we would enact the story, we would draw the story, we would do an impromptu skit, we would do a planned skit, right. we would come with the props and do the skit. So by the end of it, they played around with the story so much in so many ways that these were children who would hardly say hello in English. And here they were creating sentences and using language the way I would imagine they would. So when a story had a little rat asking, um, did you find my biscuit? And the elephant saying, no, 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 no. But I think you should go and ask someone else. So the children for a while would say the same thing and after a while we would hear a child asking someone else, did you find my pencil? No, 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 no. I think you should go and ask someone else. So that's mother tongue acquisition, right? right, right. You simply pick it up, you mm -hmm. place it in a different context and you begin to use it and they don't even know. Right. That so it just becomes so part of their life. They've begun to use English and we had children who um, uh, were in class two. They'd been with the school for two or three years and uh, these are children who don't speak up in the classroom with the class teacher okay. ever mm -hmm. any question and the child would say like ma'am she won't respond i'm telling you she won't respond she's very shy and two months down the line padma priya was fighting for the role of the protagonist in the skit and she played the role no sign of fear before an audience of 300 people so that's so a first sign of success these are just uh, for me i cherish Right. that experience right. it, it was proof of what I had believed in mm -hmm. and what I thought one could do through storytelling so she was just so keen on being part of the story and sharing the story and being that character in the story that she completely was unaware it um, was exactly opposite two months back yeah Very yeah good. so, so storytelling can work amazingly work. and this is one uh, so that's episode. for the children no, right? <laughs>